In this video we're going to learn about standing waves. So in this problem a standing wave on a string is shown and the first question is how many total nodes are present? Alright, well a node is a point of no vibration. And when we draw a standing wave we tend to draw it twice. So once with a solid line like this to show what the wave would look like at one time and once with a dashed line like this to show what the wave would look at another time. So standing waves only occur at very special frequencies and they set up this wave that stands here and does have points of no vibration. So our nodes would be right here, no vibration, right here, no vibration, here, and here. Alright, so we have a total of four nodes. So anti means opposite, so when it asks us about how many total anti-nodes we have, so our anti-nodes are going to be points of maximum vibration. So an anti-node would be this point right here, or here, or here. So this halfway in between each node, we're going to get an anti-node, so I have a total of three anti-nodes right here. So these anti-nodes these are the points where it's going back and forth and back and forth, maximum vibrations. All right, so next it asked me to count the number of waves that I see. Let me clear this out a little bit. So a couple ways to do this is one, I know that that is one wave. And then that's not another full wave there, that's another half wave, so I'm at 1.5 waves. Or another way to do this is I like to think of each of these spaces between a node and the next node as half of a wave, or 50 cents. So 50 cents, a dollar, and then another 50 cents. If I add those up, that gives me a total of 1.5 waves. All right, let's take a look at another one. So on this one, it says a standing wave in a tube is shown. How many total nodes are present? So my nodes, I'll have a node right here and right there. And then I'll have anti-nodes halfway in between them. So an anti-node here. And you'll notice that the open end of the tube, we're going to always have an anti-node, an area of maximum vibration. For a standing wave to be set up in a tube, at the, at the open end of the tube, we need an anti-node. At the closed end of the tube, where the air can't vibrate, we'll always have a node. All right, so that gives me two nodes and two anti-nodes. Now if I want to count how many wavelengths there are. Well, I said between two nodes, one of these like bubble looking things is half a wave, or think about it that as 50 cents. Now from a node to the anti-node, that's just a quarter of a wave. And so that's going to give me a total of 0 0.75 waves. All right, next we're asked to start drawing our standing wave. So it says a student plucks a string that is fixed at both ends, creating a standing wave that vibrates such that there are a total of five nodes, including any nodes at the end. So I think the easiest way to draw them, well, first of all, let's answer these questions. Is there a node or anti-node at the left end of the string? Well, the string is fixed right there, so there can't be any vibration, so that means we're going to have a node. On the right end, the string is also fixed, so we're going to have a node as well. All right, so I need a total of five nodes. I already have two at the ends. That means I need to add three in the middle. So I'm gonna to try to space them evenly. Did okay. All right, and now I'm going to draw my standing wave. So first, it doesn't matter if you start off up or down, but we only wanna cross that center line at the nodes. Then I wanna draw the reflection of that with a dashed line, and there we go. All right, so I do see that I have five nodes like I wanted. I have anti-node at the halfway in between each node, giving me a total of four anti-nodes, and then I just have to count the wavelengths. So I'm going to label each time between nodes as half of a wave or 50 cents and then add those together and that will give me a total of two waves on this string. 
All right, let's go ahead and take a look at our next one. It says a wind instrument consists of a pipe that is open on the left end, but closed on the right end. A standing wave is generated inside the pipe that includes a total of three nodes, including any nodes at the end. All right, it says, is there a node or an anti-node at the left end? So at the left end, we have op an opening. That means the air can vibrate. So we're going to have an anti-node at the left end. At the right end, the right end is closed, so the air cannot vibrate. So we'll have a node. Let me go ahead and draw a dot right there. All right, the problem says we want to have a total of three nodes. So I'm going to draw in three. I'm also going to label my anti-nodes already, because I know I'm going to go node, anti-node. Now I can tell that my spacing was not so good. So let me go ahead and erase that and try again. Giving a little more space, so node, anti-node, node, anti-node, and I feel much better about this. All right, so that means I'm going to have a total of three anti-nodes. And now it's time for me to draw my wave and count wavelengths. When I'm drawing my waves, a good trick is I like to draw a little line at the, at the top and bottom of the tube, above and below each anti-node, so I can kind of go connect the dots here. So it doesn't matter which one I start at, but I know I only want to cross that center line at the nodes. And now I'm going to draw the reflection of this. Like that. All right, and this will help me count my waves. So I know that between two nodes is half a wave, or 0 0.50. But here at the end, from the node to the anti-node, this is just half of a half or a quarter of a wave. That means my total is going to be 1.25 waves. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at our next one. So it says a student plucks a string that is fixed at both ends, creating a wave that vibrates at its fundamental frequency. All right, I'm going to highlight fundamental frequency. We'll come back to that in just a second. So it says there a node or an anti-node at the left end. Well, at both ends, the string is fixed. So we have to have nodes there. The string can't, string can't vibrate at either of those points. Fundamental frequency, that means the lowest frequency possible. To get the lowest frequency, we want the longest wave. It's so the longest wavelength possible. And to get the longest wavelength possible, I want to draw the fewest nodes. So your strategy whenever you see fundamental frequency is to draw the fewest nodes possible. All right, this one already has two nodes at each end. So I don't need to add any more. I can just have an anti-node in the middle. And my fundamental frequency will look like this. All right, so total number of nodes, we'll just have two. We only had one anti-node, but it doesn't ask us about that. And for the wavelengths, well, the distance from one node to the next node is just a half, so I have 0 0.5 waves. All right, we're going to look at another fundamental frequency. But this time, we have a wind instrument that consists of a pipe that is open on the left end but closed on the right end as shown. That means on the left end, I'll have a... So open, so I'll have an anti-node. On the right end, I'll have a node. So let's go ahead and draw those in. Node on the right, anti-node on the left. All right, since it says fundamental frequency, I want the lowest frequency. That means the longest wave, fewest number of nodes. So I'm not going to add any, I don't have to. The only time on fundamental frequency that I'd need to add a node is if I just had an anti-node at both ends. Then I would need to add one node in the middle. Otherwise, don't add nodes. All right, so we ha just have one total node present, and we can go ahead and draw it. So this one, remember, I can only cross the center at a line. I can only cross the center at a node. So my wave is just going to look like this. How many wavelengths is this? Well, from an anti-node to a node, we know is just 0 0.25, and that will be our answer. 